I'm in a lot of different Facebook groups for people that do watercolor because it's something that I'm personally very interested in. And I see a lot of people posting the same types of questions and the same types of um, comments. You know, a lot of people are like, well, what's the best paint to use? What paper should I be using? But then what I'm realizing is there are these people that they want to know where to spend their money. It's not so much what paint should I use, it's like, well, what should I invest in? Better paint or better paper? And I thought that that was a good question. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a student grade paint, which we have this uh, Cotman uh, half pan set right here. And then we're going to look at a professional grade paint, which is our Lucas 1862 watercolors that we have right here. And we're going to put them on two separate pieces of paper. On this side is just an inexpensive multimedia paper. It's got a little tooth to it. And this is a high-end Fabriano Artistico uh, cold press 140 pound paper. So what I'm going to do first is I want to see how a inexpensive watercolor does first on an inexpensive paper and then on an expensive paper. We're looking for absorption, we're looking at how vibrant the color is after it dries, um, if it spreads, let's just see how it behaves, okay? So I want to go into some very, I don't want to like go in with like a yellow, I want to make sure it's a color that's bold, so you know, like this is like an ultramarine blue. And it's also very important that I point out that I'm not comparing, like if this happens to be ultramarine blue right here, <clears throat> and this happens to be ultramarine blue right here, I'm not really interested in how close they look alike or which one's more vibrant. We're looking at this paint on this paper and this paper, and then this paint on this paper and this paper. So just want to make that clear. All right, so we've got this Cotman ultramarinish blue, and let's just take a look at how it does here. All right, it's, uh, it's, it's paint on paper, that's, uh, that's all that is. So now we're going to go and just see how it sets up over here. Also should point out, just keep in mind, this isn't necessarily about the brightness of the paper, but this particular paper, this multimedia paper, is not quite as bright as this Fabriano Artistico. And this isn't, I believe, oh, it is, okay. So this is the Fabriano Artistico extra white. So that could be why it's considerably brighter than this. So um, keep that in mind as well. Now we're going to go into our ultramarine blue in our uh, student grade paint again, this time on professional Artistico Fabriano paper. I'm not measuring out water or the amount of um, paint I'm trying to put on the um, brush, I'm just playing with paint the way you might play with paint at home, okay? All right, so I'm going to let this dry completely. I might actually hit it with a hair dryer um, and see how they look. Will I need a hair dryer? All right, so right now we've laid down our inexpensive student grade watercolor on inexpensive multimedia paper and we've put it here on a professional watercolor paper, the Artistico, um, Fabriano Artistico paper. And since the color is the same, what exactly are we looking for right here? Well, to start with, we're looking for absorption. Now, when a paper uh, such as the Artistico is made, there is sizing internally and externally. And what that does is prevents too much absorption of the paint into the paper, which can uh, dull the color of the paint over time or almost immediately in some cases. So. It might be a little hard to see on your screen. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of cut these out and put them together so you can see them side by side. There is a little bit more vibrancy of the color on the professional paper. Uh, again, this is the exact same paint. So there's something to that. Now, it might be a little bit more pigmented up here. There was a little less water and a little more paint, perhaps. Um, I wouldn't say that the difference I'm seeing between the two is night and day. Um, but I, I can see a little bit more of that um, color sitting on top with this paper as compared to this uh, inexpensive multimedia paper. So now let's go ahead and we're going to put a professional watercolor uh, down next. We're going to use the Lucas 1862 watercolor half pans. Um, I don't, this is not a comparison of the paint versus the paint, so what I'll do is I'll choose a different color altogether 
uh, so that we can just kind of keep that straight in at least my head, hopefully yours. All right, now I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer and let it dry so we can look at those side by side. Okay, so now that we're using an artist grade paint, the paint should be uh, more pigmented, the pigment should be more finely crushed, which adds uh, more vibrancy to the color. And let's just see how they laid down on the paper side by side. I will say that since the multimedia paper is uh, a little bit darker, it can make the paint look darker and that is also a good point to kind of bring home is always be conscientious of the paper that you're using in terms of color if you want really bright 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 colors um, an extra white uh, or, 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 or bright white paper can help with that with watercolor because they're transparent uh, and the whites in your painting uh, gen generally unless you're using like a Chinese white come from the paper itself but I do think that from what I can see from these two side by side, the, the Lucas 1862 watercolors on the Fabriano does seem brighter. It, does, it, it seems like even beyond the color difference of the paper that this is sort of dulled a little bit. These are all a little negligible. And as we keep going, we're going to be adding certain layers that kind of go above and beyond, well, what about just how the paint lays on the paper? So um, maybe we should get into some of those. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is move on. So right now you can see this is our student grade paper, this is our pro paper, student grade paint on student grade paper, pro paint on student grade paper, student grade paint on pro paper, pro paint on pro paper, okay? And I'm gonna use these as a, as a constant, okay? So if you see blue, you know that it's coming from the Cotman, the student grade set, if you see this, um, Crimson color here, you know it's coming from the Lucas 1862 artist color. So beyond just how the paint goes on the paper, let's look at a few other factors that can go into your watercolors, okay? So let's say that you wanted to do a wash. Well, let's see what that would look like and also what it might do to the paper. So I'm gonna lay down a larger area of water Now when you're using a thinner paper, like this inexpensive paper, it can buckle. I didn't, this is just taped down so that it's easier for filming. This is not a stretched piece of watercolor paper. Um, but with that being said, let me, let me go into this ultramarine blue. And let's just see what our wash looks like. I will tell you that the paper is, now if you can see that, See how it's kind of a little bouncy right now? There is a slight buckle to it. Um, there might be inexpensive papers that are a little bit thicker, but because of the sizing, um, most likely even if the paper is thicker, it won't necessarily prevent the buckling from happening because the water is getting into the paper. It's penetrating the paper itself. So let's do that again. This time we're gonna do this on pro paper. All right, now let's go ahead and dry these. Now that we're covering a slightly larger area and the color was slightly more diluted across the board than what I did up here, I think it stands to reason based on what I just saw here. Now, again, student grade paint, student grade paint, 
the paper is definitely making the paint look much better on the AT, on the um, on the Fabriano Artistico paper. Uh, it's holding together nicer. It's staying more vibrant. Um, I used as as close as I could using what we you know the same you, way you'd play with paint at home. Um, you can also see kind of that it edged out a little bit better because this water probably started to disperse in the paper, which means I couldn't get a sharp line where my water ended. Now the other thing I want to look at is how much it, now it's not completely dry yet, so let me just hit it one more time just to make sure it's fair. So the paper is still taped down, although it's not stretched, so there still might be some buckling. We might get a better idea of it after we're done and um, pull the paper up, but you can see that this is sort of settled down. There's not a lot of pop to it. Like it's not like coming up like it was before. And this is almost completely flat. There's, there's just a little bit right there. Um, but the rest of it, yeah, is completely flat. Where this is slightly more bumps to it. Um, so when it comes to using your student grade on a student grade paper, you can see a lot clearer here how much more your paint would go on a professional paper. Now, Let's go and see if there's a big difference using a pro paint on a student grade paper versus an artist paper. Maybe the paints will look even on the nice paper and that, that's a sign that the paper is the way to go. You know, we don't know yet. I'm, I'm doing this with you. So we're going to now go and do the same thing using the Lucas 1862 um, Magenta. So from where I'm standing, you are really cheating yourself if you are spending the money on a high-end paint and not using an appropriate paper. Just look at the difference of these two. These are both the same 1862 magenta color. Just look how much more vibrant it is on the professional paper. Um, it, 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 it seems to be sitting on top better. It seems to have not spread like these colors did because the water didn't when, I did, when you do a wash, you'll put the water down first and then the co wet color over it. Um, or I shouldn't say a wash. That's, when you're doing like a wet in wet technique, you wet the paper first, then put the, the color over it. And usually with watercolor, uh, when you're using an appropriate paper, wherever you put the water, if you then take your paint and kind of drop it in there, it won't go any farther than those edges because the paper is kind of keeping that water in that one area where this is absorbing into the paper and spreading where you don't have these nice... Um, you know, harder lines uh, on the uh, student grade than you do on the professional paper. But really, I guess with this is, all I can say is, if you are using an expensive paint, but the paper is inexpensive, you can see y you might not be getting your full values worth, right? Um, and I will say, also, I feel like the, the one seems to complement the other, right? So. Even though both of these, the student grade paint and professional paint, look better on this paper, it's, it's punching them both up. So by using a good paper, even if you are using that expensive paint and an expensive paper, you're going to get, it's like almost like doubling down. Like it's like, wow, it's, look how much more it's boosting that paint versus what you can get here. It looks almost washed out. Now, this is paint on paper. But what if we wanted to remove things like the paint from the paper? What would that look like? What would we have to do? So what we're going to do now is these are both completely dry. This is fairly flat. There's a slight bump to it. Um, and this is a little bit more bumpy, but nothing major. Uh, we're going to try to lift some color, OK? I have some natural um, sea sponges. Now, some colors are more staining than others. I'm guessing that this um, red or magenta or crimson here is going to be a little bit more staining than this ultra blue. I don't know. But the, it doesn't matter. What we're, we're not looking for what lifts better. We're, we're looking at how well this color lifts off of the student grade versus the artist grade and how resilient the paper is. This is a test to see 
if I use this and I want to use the lifting technique, can I get away with it using a, um, a student grade paper? And we're also going to see if the uh, student grade paint uh, lifts any differently than the artist grade paint. So I'm going to start with the student grade paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, now this is dry, and I'm just going to swipe down the middle. Swipe down the middle. And then I'm going to try to go in there and see if I have a little bigger sponge. And I'm going to see what happens if I just start to kind of give it a little scrub. Okay, now right off the bat, I don't know if you can pick up on this. This is what you don't want. This is the paper starting to pill and peel, which means that if I was to lift this color, once it's dry, the paper is sort of damaged. I mean, maybe in, to a minor effect, but I definitely wouldn't want to go over it again or add any more color to it because it would further exacerbate the fact that the paper is not the same consistency now that it is over here. So while I will say the color appears to be coming up, what is actually happening is the paper's coming up and the paint with it. Um, now let's go over here to our artist grade paper. The fun noises are free. Okay. So with the artist paper, with the artist paper, I can see that it lifts in a similar way in terms of how much of the color comes off, but the paper is not damaged. Where here I can kind of feel a difference. Um, in fact, if I continue to work it with my finger, I can further pull pieces of that off, where this is doing a much better job staying together, again, because of the internal external sizing. Uh, so let's try this again um, with the Pro Color uh, and see how that does. And this time I'm going to add more water just to make sure it's really um, getting that, 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 that watercolor reactivated. Okay. All right, so we'll go to our. So I'm going to try blotting, and the blotting is not lifting anything. So now I'm going to try to. Well, yeah, I guess this makes sense. It, it will do the same thing. The paper is peeling up horrendously um, when I'm trying to lift off of this. So, um, yeah, I mean, why, why would I expect it to behave any differently just because the, the paint is professional, the paper is not, so it's coming up. So right now, I'm definitely leaning towards, hey, that paper is pretty darn important, especially if you um, are trying to do more than just lay color down. All right. Yeah, I see how that paper's not tearing. I'm getting little, little bits, but I actually think it's more of the sponge than the paper. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like that. Um, and as I said earlier, this color is, is a little bit more staining, so it appears to have lifted better over here slightly, but it's just because the paper came up. Where over here, um, it, it, again, there was a little bit of lift that I was able to get uh, because the pigment's so staining, it's hard to lift regardless, but the paper stayed together. Um, so that's, that's, that's interesting. I want to keep that in mind. Now, when you're using watercolor paper, um, you might be using tapes. You might be using tapes to mask or to kind of keep it tight and stretched. Um, just for fun, um, I'm going to try to see, let's see, maybe if I go on the side here. This isn't really a big deal of a test, but I'm curious I'm curious to see what happens when I put some paint down across the tape and the paper, let it dry, and then try to remove the tape, what happens. So I'm going to do that um, in a similar technique. So I'm going to wet both. And I'll go back to this um, Cotman.
And for this one, I don't think I need to do both colors. I think that um, at this point, we're just sort of looking at the paper. I don't need to do the pro and the, um, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm going to gain any extra um, insight by doing both, but we'll see. What I'm looking for now is basically if I'm able to get any kind of line. I'm using a, um, an artist tape, right? So this is a tape that's meant to be uh, repositioned, reusable. And I'm just trying to see how much of the water kind of seeps underneath the tape, if I'm able to get a straight line, what it does to the paper. Um, so let's just check that out. All right, I'm going to give it a quick dry, and then we're going to peel up this tape and just see what happens. So now we're going to remove the tape and see if anything uh, is different between the two. So I'm going to start down here. Okay, that was not great. That, that can happen. See how it, it, it peeled off a little piece. It's, it's, my, it's minor. It's minor, but that especially in a larger area, can be a bigger deal. Um, not a super sharp line, but better than I thought it would be. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, the paper pilled up there. I will also say, though, that the tape did release nicely without damaging this paper. Um, you know, it didn't tear the paper because this, this tape is meant to be removed, but if you put it on a weak paper, it, it can be a strong tape. It's more designed for an artist. Um, Uh, more designed for an artist paper. Okay. So this is a much sharper line. Nothing peeled up. Um, I'm actually surprised it didn't do more of that. But look, you know, I, I, that was just my own personal thought bias. But um, regardless, the, the professional paper did not let any water seep underneath. And you can see you got a much harder line. Now, that was the same tape on both. So what did we learn here today? Well, from what I can tell, from what I can see, using just this. Now, there are so many variables out there. And I understand that some of you guys out there are like, well, he didn't test this. He didn't test that. I'm trying to keep this video under an hour <laughs> or half hour. Um, what I'm just looking at is just some very simple, simplistic things. Um, that you might be using. A lot of um, people that are just starting out or hobbyists, those are a lot of the people that I find on um, my Facebook groups asking these questions. More established artists tend to already know what they like and want. And I will say that the majority of them might say that for them, the paint is more important because they know how it's going to behave in terms of mixing and what they're comfortable with. But especially when you're just starting out, I'd say that the paper makes a humongous difference um, if you want ease of use. Uh, now, we didn't mix colors here. I mean, that's a whole separate story. I mean, we're not talking about how well colors mix or if they mix mud or um, how well they glaze or any of that stuff. So it's, you got to take the, the fact that we're using a student grade and an artist grade with a grain of salt in that aspect. But you can see how much more vibrant the colors are, both of them, on the professional paper. Um, so I would say for this test, if, if it was for my money and I had a limited budget, I would want to make sure that I had paid more for a higher quality paper uh, and get the best paint I can use to complement that. Because there are other things that go into, this isn't a video about student grade paint versus artist grade paint, it was about the mixing and matching. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you want to see more videos like this on our channel, please be sure to subscribe, like the video. Uh, that's the way we know that people are actually not only watching it, but like it. Uh, please comment below um, what you might want us to try up here. What we're playing with paint, other art supplies, love to know. And hit the bell to be notified when we add new videos. So let's make a recommendation. Let's put it that way, recommendation. If you are starting out in art, my recommendation is make sure that you get the best paper you can afford and then the best paint you can. When you cross over, 
and you're, you know, you're trying to get the best of the best, it's the artist paint and the artist paper. This kind of reminds me, I know this is a strange analogy, but uh, about 20 years ago, there was a very popular diet called the Atkins diet. And you could lose a ton of weight eating lots of bad food for you by simply skipping out on sugar and carbs. You could eat all the bacon you wanted. Um, but at a certain point, you'd plateau and you wouldn't lose any more weight. You wouldn't necessarily gain more weight, but you wouldn't lose any more weight. And if you wanted to continue to lose weight, you then had to cut the calories and start eating healthier in general. And we're not, this isn't a diet video. We're not talking about what it's doing to your arteries. But the point is, you had to double down to get the best results. To get the best results on the Atkins diet, you actually had to first, you, you first cut out the carbs, then you had to cut out the calories. So with this, to get the best result, paper is the base, and then the paint on top of that will accelerate it if you feel like you've plateaued. So start with a good paper, best paint you can afford. If you feel like your paintings are reaching a certain level that you can't kind of get past in terms of vibrancy, then you start increasing your paint. Uh, is that good? Yeah? Okay. I got a thumbs up from the back. All right. So that's my recommendation. Do you disagree? Do you agree? Let me know below. Fight amongst yourselves. I enjoy that as well. Thanks for watching.